Put your hands in the air for Monday, everybody, because it's countdown day here on the channel. And this one is a suggestion that was made by a fan. And when I heard the topic, I said to myself, I don't know how well this is going to work out, man. I really don't know how well it's going to work out because we all know that the live action movies have been such a polarizing thing. Yeah, they definitely brought the uh, Transformers back to the mainstream, but there's a lot of hardcore fans that have never been a fan. And the topic is the top 10 Transformers live action movie original characters. There's an interesting side discussion to have here, but these are the top 10 characters that their first appearance in fiction, maybe their only appearance in fiction, is in the live action movies. 10 originals because of the movies, if that makes sense. I hope it does. Certainly will by the time we get to the end of this. So without any further ado, how about we jump into the latest Got Bot Countdown. Hey one, hey all, welcome back to the channel. I'm your host, your most humble of hosts, Dennis Moulton, a.k.a. Gotbot. As always, man, please like, comment, share, of course, subscribe and while you're at it, light him up, baby. And hit that notification bell, please. It helps me out a ton. It lets you know when content of all sorts goes up here on the channel. Check out Machinery of Man, The Everything Factor, all the groups that I'm either a mod or an admin for, as well as all of my social media links. All of that is in the description down below. Also in the description down below, and if you're in a position to help the channel to grow, you can use the donate link. Check us out on Patreon. See what we offer to you through Teespring, or of course hit the join button right here on YouTube and become a channel member. And this is the top 10 original, originally created characters for the live action movies. Like these are ones that now we know, but they only came about because of the live action movies. Now, it's very interesting. I don't have any honorable mentions. But I do have an interesting side discussion that I want to do here. Some people, I'll say, misinterpreted the intended use of the word original here. Some people thought that it meant like a name reuse, like an original name that probably came from like G1. And it was reused here. So who are the, like, the top original characters, the ones that are supposed to be indicative of G1? And some said, well, they're original because, you know... Even Megatron is original here because um, it's the live-action Megatron. And he's totally different than the G1, and that's totally different than the Unicron trilogy, and blah, 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 blah. And I had to explain, no, no, they can't count because long before there was a movie, there was, there was a Megatron. In fact, there were several Megatrons. So he wasn't a movie original character. Optimus Prime's not a movie original character. Um, but here's what I will say. Let's pretend for a second that we did like interpret uh, original to mean those names that are being reused and recycled here. There's some real, real interesting ones. Um, Drift, for example. And I would even argue that the movie Drift is so incredibly unique that one could say it's an original character because it's completely different from the R.I.D. or the I.D.W. versions, for example. Um, Blackout. I mean... Everybody says his scene at the beginning of the first movie still gives him chills. I get it. And being a big helicopter is cool, but there is a G1 blackout that's a micromaster, if I do believe. And I believe there is, I don't know if it was produced or not, but there is a Black Seeker that I think was, was or is or was supposed to be part of the G2 line that's also named Blackout. Then we have Barricade. Barricade is a G1 micromaster. In fact, he's a pretty brutal, cruel leader of his group. You may know him better by the name Runner, because he got renamed as Runner in the War for Cybertron trilogy. But that little blue guy, that's, that's Barricade. But here's the thing. The full-size police car version of Barricade became so mainstream that people forget about the MicroMaster version. So mainstream that even now we have in the War for Cybertron line a G1 version of Barricade. In fact, we've had him with a Cybertronium mode and an Earth mode. That says a lot about the impact that the movie Barricade character had. 
couldn't be included here because it's not a movie original character. Same goes for Ironhide, same goes for um, who else kind of had some of those sort of votes. Grimlock, same goes technically for Skids, but what's interesting is I could count Mudflap and let's be realistic, they're often one and the same, but we did have a Skids before this. Again, wildly different. Hound or Bulkhead, if you will. You know, wildly different. So, I respect all of those votes. I understand why people would say, hey, unique versions of the characters, but because they're not like original, brand new characters, due to the live action films, they could not be included on this list. So, since they couldn't be included, who could? Well, you know what we're going to do? We're going to kick things off after that whole mess of a spiel with number 10 a first. And at number 10, we have not one, but two characters and a tie. That's right, it is Stinger and Quintessa. So Stinger first. Um, you know, I know that he's called Red Bumblebee, but, you know, he, he had a unique car mode, and when we got him in studio series, like, I was real happy to get it. I think that that Stinger is pretty brilliantly done. I think he's fun. I think he's interesting. He may not have been given a whole lot of character in the film, but his existence is there. He is a Decepticon because of the film, and that's exactly what this list was about. Then we have Quintessa, who was really the embodiment of the entire Quintesson race. And while she did certainly name herself self after the planet, Quintessa, and while she certainly, I think, has room to be explored a lot more, her power is undeniable, her influence was undeniable, and her knowledge of things like Unicron being in Earth, her knowledge of how to manipulate the Transformers themselves, just saying, Nemesis Prime, was unbridled bridled and unparalleled. She was a Quintesson character created specifically for the film, and she was indeed, at the, at the very least, definitely memorable. And for that reason, these two new characters, original characters, took conjointly the number 10 slot. Coming in at number 9 is technically 12 characters. Yeah, but we know those 12 together as Dragonstorm. Now we did get a plastic release. I own it. A lot of people complained and said that they broke off the dragon's heads and stuff. I'm not really sure how that happened. I like Dragonstorm. The, of course, the one that came out is a 2-bot combiner. The one in the film was a 12-bot combiner. I don't think those bots had individual names, but Dragonstorm, yeah, I mean... I wouldn't necessarily say a major main character, but when you look at Dragonstorm's uh, scenes early in the last night, I think it was the last night that they were in, some of the later ones really kind of <laughs> meshed together for me. You can't deny that there was a presence. You can't deny that it wasn't one of those spine-tingling moments when you saw this huge, gigantic, king like beast. He had an impact, he had an influence, and he was brand new, and he took the number nine slot. Number eight, I don't believe we've ever had an official release of, and it is a bit of a quirky character. Certainly had one of my favorite head sculpts ever, one of the most unique head sculpts ever, even if the poor guy was old and senile. It's this guy. That's right, it is Bulldog, who is basically retired, old, senile, falling apart, but nevertheless, somebody that the fans really seem to have gravitated to and really caught on to. He was a very minor character in the films, but a very memorable character. Enough that one of the third party companies, and I wish I could remember which one now, did do a beautiful rendition of him, complete with that awesome head sculpt brand new character, ironically, probably one of the oldest Transformers, Bulldog, extremely memorable, and he took the number eight slot. Number seven is, to my knowledge, the only headmaster in the live action movies. Of course, I'm talking about Cogman, and while in plastic, we did get uh, a version of him with his body. In the film, we really just had the head version that never really became the head of anything, even though I think there's a cut scene where he became like Nitro Zeus's head or something. Um, but we never saw him with his own transtector, right? 
It just, it didn't happen. But nobody could say that they don't remember Cogman. Nobody could say that at certain times he wasn't comic relief, and nobody can say that at certain times he probably wasn't a little... I'm just saying. Uh, Cogman, memorable, impactful, unique, to say the very least. And because he was new, because he was all those other things, and because fans remember him, he took the number seven slot. Number six almost didn't make the list, because number six is this guy. Yeah, man, it's Dino. Kind of a weird-looking bot. Very red, very beautiful. Uh, I think he even had, like, an Italian accent. I've seen the Studio Series version. It's just... Something about the proportions just don't sit right with me. But I, I'm not going to pretend if you heard a sneeze that was Starscream Wife. If you didn't hear it, then don't mind I said that. Um, like, I think he, he, was, he was definitely unique. He seemed to have come out of nowhere. I wish he had a little more backstory to explain, like, why are you here? Where did, did you come from? I get it. Originally, he's supposed to be named Mirage. And had they stuck with the Mirage name, he wouldn't have made it on this list. But they didn't stick with the Mirage name, and I'm glad they didn't because this guy looks nothing like Mirage, I would say that Dino is indeed a whole new character, a whole new Red Autobot, and someone a little bit exotic. For all those reasons and more, he took the number six slot. And of course you know that by now a hush falls over the crowd because we are at the most coveted of locations, the halfway mark. And at the halfway mark we have the one of at least the newest Dinobots by way of scorn and like I have the deluxe scorn I didn't get the Voyager I don't know if I ever will I guess we'll see even though I think both of them are pretty cool I love scorn's head sculpt absolutely love it didn't get a ton of character development or anything but I really dig Scorn and I dig that when he transforms he's supposed to be a bunch of like smaller Dinobots like I think that's such a cool concept yes we know the Dinobots are the main five but I'm all right with the addition of Slash whether we want to talk about the movie one or the g one little little lady that's joined the group so to speak or Scorn I saw him right away and said the colors might be those kind of funky colors that we get with the movie, but that head sculpt man is nailed on G1 and he fits right in. Absolutely love it. Absolutely love Scorn. Absolutely happy that he took the number five slot. Well, just like the only headmaster that's been in the Transformers films appeared on the list, so did the only pretender. And it's this character. The ever dangerous Alice. Yes, indeed. Um, some people asked me. They said, "Can can human characters be included?" Sure, they can. Why not? And then somebody said, "Alice," and I was like, "Well, it's not exactly human." They were like, "Pretender." I'm like, "You're right. When you're right, you're right." And you know what? Since pretenders are being revisited in the legacy line, I'd be cool if we got a version of Alice. I don't know what you would transform into or how that would exactly work, but it was definitely an interesting, dangerous take on a Decepticon pretender. One that was not only unique, not only new, but also surprising because when she revealed herself to be a Decepticon, I was like, oh man, did not see that coming. Did not see that coming. So it was nice to get a surprise. Alice, yeah. New character, Dangerous Pretender, and she took the number four slot. Number three, one of the ones that honestly didn't have a ton of screen time, but man, did this character maximize the time that he had to leave a lasting impression, and it's this guy. Good old Nitro Zeus, plus his plastic iteration is glorious. I still have the Nitro Zeus head, even though for the body, I ended up painting it to become uh, my version of Thunderwing. Um, and I put the uh, Thunderwing head in it from one of those Titans Return box sets. But man, I'm not going to lie. I love that mold. I love the transformation. I love the intricacy. I love the resulting plane mode. I love that as bulky as the robot looks, it's so very functional. Absolutely dig it. And you know what? The fact that the guy had so much personality in the movies just sealed the deal for being one of the best film original characters. Nitro Zeus tooks, tooks, yeah, took the number three spot. Absolutely deserved to be on this list. And now we're into the top two. And at number two is 
this guy. That's right, it's Dropkick, man. A lot of people said that, you know, he seemed foreboding and brooding, which was cool. He had a cool helicopter mode, he had a cool car mode, and he liked it because the fleshies popped, and he thought that was kind of funny. You know, like, there was something maniacal, but something endearing about him all at the same time. Plus, the way he met his demise, while kind of bonkers, was also sort of spectacular. A new character, a new villain, a new threat, a new Decepticon. We could always use more Decepticons. Dropkick took the number three, or nope, two slot, and that only leaves one. And at number one, we have the top live action film original character as voted on by fans. Voiced by Angela Bassett, I absolutely agree with this because just the look of the character and then the attitude of the character was not only manipulative of humans, but was also somewhat foreboding and terrifying in and of itself. It is this character, of course. Shatter, man. When you got a cool name like Shatter, when you got that slick plane mode and that muscle car strong alt mode, when you have a robot face that looks, honestly, to me, it looked like a witch, like it looked horrific to me. It was all of the elements you needed to have a villain that you could really, really see as a threat, but at the same time that you could really actually get behind being defeated. You didn't want her to win. Part of that is because of the design of the character. Part of it is because of the wonderful voice acting of Angela Bassett. Um, Shatter, an original character, one of the most endearing original characters, and she easily took the number one slot. I hope by now, man, since we have gone from 10 down to 1, you understand what I meant by original characters. They are ones for the film. And you know what? Shockingly, <clears throat> there's more than the ones that were on the list. Reed Man, for example, was another one. Uh, Squeaks, of course, had a vote. Um, I accepted Q, even though that's that version apparently of Wheeljack, but now in the Bumblebee film we actually have Wheeljack, so maybe Q was his own thing. Like, there's a lot of there's a lot of iffiness there, so I did accept uh, uh, a vote for Q. We also had Steelbane get a couple of votes. Um, who else did? Stratosphere didn't appear in the films, but certainly appeared in plastic, had a vote. Um, Incinerator, Dispenser, uh, Scalpel, Doctor, right? The Doctor, Scalpel, uh, Day Trader. Uh, someone said Crossfire. I don't remember Crossfire. But like Iron High Jazz, Sideswipe, Lockdown had votes. They couldn't count. Uh, who else had votes here? Charlie. Charlie Watts had votes. Michaela had votes. <laughs> My favorite was a vote for Sam's mom, which is an original character. Even if you say Sam is Spike from the G1, even if you say his dad is Sparkplug from the G1, Sam's mom would be an original character. She was hilarious. Uh, Mudflap uh, certainly had some votes. And I would honestly say that Mudflap and Skids could have been meshed together. Uh, and uh, let's say, lastly, Wheelie. While it was a very unique version of Wheelie, Wheelie, as we all know, <laughs> had a character in history before the movies. Anyway, there you go. That's the list. Let me know if your favorites made it or not. I appreciate you guys coming by. Give me some of your extremely valuable time. I do know how important it is to you if you... You, yeah. If you are in a position to help the channel to grow, you can use the donate link. You can check us out on Patreon. You can see what we offer to you through Teespring. Or, of course, you can hit the join button right here on YouTube and become a channel member. Hit that subscribe button. Stick around. Have some fun with us here on the channel. And don't forget, man, that somehow, some way, each and every single solitary day, you do make a difference. And I look forward to the next time that you and I get together to have another visit, either in the live streams on Thursday nights at the stop motion premieres or the old-fashioned way right here inside the videos.